to Sound Doctrine Studio, an Israel of God production. Join us Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time to hear topics taught by teachers of the Israel of God's worldwide ministry and proven by the Word of God. Each lesson will be followed by a Q&A session and closing remarks. You won't want to miss it. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed, which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Brothers and sisters, I have read Psalm 25, 1 through 5. And verses 7 through 8, may the Lord have the blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Josh, for that excellent sound. Yes. Hey, we'd like to welcome everyone here to another edition of Sound Doctrine Studio. I'm Brother Harold from the Buffalo, New York camp. And this is episode 119. And like, share, post. This is an Israel of God production where our senior mm -hmm. pastor is Brother Henry Bowie. And we got a, another lesson for you today. I'd like to welcome Brother Josh. How you doing? Blessings, brothers and sisters. Peace to everybody. Uh, so glad to be here to read for our beloved brother and to edify the people. Praise the Lord. He's from the Birmingham camp. And we got Brother Stevie teaching today. How you doing, Brother Stevie from New Jersey? Um, it's a blessing to be amongst you, too. You already know how I feel about you. Uh, we're going to have some fun tonight bringing the word of God, family, like we always do. All right. We're glad to have you all, and we hope you'll be edified with this lesson. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Stevie without further ado. How you, what you got? All right. So the title of our lesson today, as you all saw, is the, excuse me, the doctrine of pronouns, right? Your pronouns. He him, she, her, they, them. You see them everywhere, right? Sometimes, even now, most recently, you see them at the bottom of people's emails. If you've ever hopped on a Zoom call, people even put their preferred pronouns by their names, right? And why call it doctrine, all right? Let me get to my notes. Let me read to you all what the definition of doctrine is. All right, so according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a doctrine is a belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church, political party, or other group. There's a doctrine out here with preferred pronouns or pronouns that you can choose as if our God is not the master builder of this world. So we're going to jump right in. Let's go to John chapter six, verse 63. And after this lesson, you are going to make or have to make a decision because we're going to make this clear. And I hope you all leave today with a couple of scriptures you can keep in your hip pocket. John 6 and 63, let's start it off here. Come on, Brother Josh. It is a spirit that quickeneth. Yep. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Yeah, so right out the gate, the words that we read unto you, that Josh is going to read, they are spirit and they are life. So you're going to have a decision to make. You're either going to walk away from the lesson and be like, you know what? I knew it. Or you're going to be like, oh boy. 
Oh boy, I got some work to do. Okay. Now let's go to Psalm 104. We got one more scripture or the 104th Psalm to lay some groundwork before we jump right into this thing. <clears throat> Psalm 104, we'll start at verse 21 because we have to establish the power of the God we serve or the God of this Bible. Psalm 104, verses 21 through 25. Come on, Brother Josh. The young lions roar after their prey yeah. and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth. They gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom has thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things, excuse me, where wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. So he made everything. Young lions roar, they get their seek their, they get and seek their meat from who? From God, right? I don't know about you all, but I love watching a little National Geographic and all those little uh, uh, Earth shows that come on Netflix. And sometimes they take you deep, 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 deep down in the ocean. And you see these little fish and they look weird. And you're like, how are they making it down here? But the Lord has equipped them to not only protect them themselves when they down there from they prey, they know how to eat too. Do you guys know there are species that we haven't even... Uh, uh, came across yet, don't even know the name of them yet. That's right. God created all of it, right? Skip down to 27 through 30. These wait all upon thee. Yes. Th that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them, they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. He's in control of everything, brother Josh. Yes, He's he in control of everything. Come on, go ahead. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Mm -hmm. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Everything, the everything, everything comes from God. He's in control of it all. Mm -hmm. Even the baby and the type of gender or pronoun your baby is going to use. Okay? Now, let's go to this man creation. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Now that we have established that everything comes from God, let's go to Genesis chapter one. Yes, amen. Yes, brother Drake, come on. We can't keep playing games, y'all. And this is milk. This should be baby food, right? Genesis one, verse 10. We got the Lord bringing everything in motion and we're gonna pay attention to some things he's going to say, right, after his kind. We, he, he's going to say that. So let's pay attention to that. Let's go to Genesis 1. We'll start at verse 10. Come on, brother. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And it was good, right? So we got earth. Now, let's get down to verse 20. And let's pay attention to what we read. We're going to read verses 20 through 27, and I'm going to try to keep my big mouth shut, okay? Verse 20. Come on, brother. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Come on. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. So verses 21, we, verse 21, we got after their kind, after his kind. Verse 24, after his kind. Come on. 25, verse 25. And, and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, 
and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So what we got here, Brother Harold, we got a switch up, right? Mm -hmm. We got a switch up. The beat has been after his kind, after his kind, after his kind. And then it switched up and said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So we not made it the same thing, which is why we had to be adopted. Ain't that right, Brother Harold? Yes, and sir. And then we were given a name and then we get this body either at the second coming of our, our, our Lord and Savior as soon as he comes or mm -hmm. at the second resurrection. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't it make sense? This fit, don't it? It does. Right. Verse 27. So God, yeah, yeah, 20, yeah, give me 27. I'm sorry, brother. Come on. So God created man in his own image. Yes. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So that's the whole man species right there, brothers, ain't it? Male right. and female. It's two of them. Male and female. Now let's break this down some more. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. And let's look at this for a little bit. Let's skip down to verse 7. Let's see how he did it, okay? Let's see how he did this. Genesis 2, verse 7. Come on, brother. We and got the Lord male God, and female so far. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And if I take that breath out of you, brother Harold, what you going to be? Go back to the dust from which you came from. And you're going to be a dead soul, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now let's skip down. To verse 15, because we can't read everything, right? Let's pick this up at verse 15. Give me verse 15 through 18. Come on. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So he put some parameters around the man. He had him in the garden of Eden doing whatever he wanted to do, but told him, look, it's these two other trees that's going to be here. One mm -hmm. of them I don't want you to mess with, right? And then he took a step back and he noticed, he said, you know what? It's not good that man should be alone. I'm going to make him and help me. Let's see how he did it. Skip down to verse 21. What did he do, Brother Josh? And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he mm -hmm. slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. We got a lot going on here, y'all. First of mm -hmm. all, I have this underlined and I wrote first surgery. because it's the first <laughs> surgery, right? He took the rib out of the brother, right? And made a woman. And then he, I say a pronoun in verse 22, Josh. You see a pronoun? Mm -hmm. see, that yes, woman uh, got a pronoun. That's her. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. And then you go to verse 23. It starts calling her she. Mm -hmm. We've got some pronouns here, y'all. But yeah, we can't we react. We can't react too much right now. We got to keep reading, okay? Because we mm -hmm. can really end the lesson right here. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to keep going, okay? Verses 24 and 25. Come on, brother. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and mm. shall cleave unto his wife, and mm. they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So we got titles, father and mother. Man is going to cleave onto the title that this woman can take, which is wife. And then they come together and they be one. This all fit like a glove, don't it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how this is going. All right, let's keep this up then. This is real easy. And that's why he's saying Malachi chapter 2 that he want, he seek a godly seed, right? Yeah, do. Because you bring these two together and they can make that happen. Now let's go to Genesis 3. We got two verses here. Right? Let's see what he's going to do with this man and woman. We're going to go to verse 16 because when you read this on your own, brothers and sisters, the beginning of this, man then sinned against God. Man then done what God told him not to do and ate of that tree. Okay? Now let's pay attention to the sentence that the woman and the man get. All right? Because there's a difference here. Genesis 3, verse 16. Come on, brother. He's talking to the woman now. 
Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Mm, so we got a husband, got a pronoun for he, and then women have babies, brothers. Ain't this what they say? It's all day. Women have babies. So if you can't have a baby, are you a woman? <laughs> no. It got to be natural too. Come on. Right? Skip down to verse 20. Now, let me say this. There are also medical conditions out there. So let me just frame that, right? Make it, make right? it plain. Let me, let, let me frame that as well. But y'all know what we're getting at here. You know what we're getting at here. I'm talking about the alphabet game, okay? Skip down to verse 20. Give me verse 20. Now let's look what he what Adam calls Eve. And she gets a title too. Go ahead, verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So Eve got a title of a wife, mother of all living. She got a pronoun named she. This is real easy, y'all, ain't it? Mm -hmm. This is real easy. Basic. And the Lord had to equip them with what they needed because he gave them the directive in Genesis 1. So he had to equip them with what they needed so they could do what? Procreate after his kind, on, after brother. their kind, right? Mm -hmm. Go back to Genesis 1, read verse 28. <clears throat> this is going to be easy today, y'all. Genesis 1 and 28. What else God do to this man, brother? Go ahead. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Mm. Yeah, so you got to be equipped to be able to do that, don't you, brothers? Mm. Yes, you do. He got to give you what you need so you can do that. Now, let's mm. skip to Genesis 4, because Eve got some titles of mother wife we already know she a wife let's yes. see her bear this title as mother because women have babies no man having babies <laughs> what's that movie that was a movie back in the day when Arnold Schwarzenegger in a movie or something yeah that foolery I can't recall that one <laughs> Genesis good, 4 good. <laughs> yeah yeah we, we shouldn't be able to recall it either Genesis 4 and verse 1 4 and verse 1 come on brother and Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Mm. She gotten a what from who? A man oh. from the Lord. Who gave it to her? We the can Lord. end this lesson right here. He know what he doing, and mm. she recognized who gave it to her. Mm. Now she gonna have another baby. You all can read all this stuff on your own, what happened to Cain and Abel, and you'd be surprised how many people ain't heard of this son. But let's skip down to verse 25. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Verse and 25. Adam, come on, brother. And Adam knew his wife again. Yeah. And, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. Mm -hmm. For God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so men plant seeds in women and they bring forth more man species, whether it be male or female. Male carries the pronouns of he, him. And female carries the pronoun of she or her. Make it plain. Yeah. That's easy, right? This is the children's mm -hmm. class tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. All right? Well, we're going to yes. make this real plain. And I'm telling y'all, keep these scriptures in your back pocket because you're going to get ganged up on. And you're going to have to defend yourself. And you do it in grace. And you do it in mercy. Right? Yes, Go sir. to 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to look at another sister who recognized who her baby came from. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to read about the birth of Samuel. Well, we're going to read about his mother. And this brother is a, a very important dude, okay? He anointed the first two kings of Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, so you might want to get to know this brother. You might want to get to know his mother and really pay attention to the prayer she gives to God after he blesses her according to what we about to read first samuel chapter one let's read verses one and two let's set the stage real quick okay verses mm -hmm. one and two come on my brother now there was a certain man of ramathaim sophim 
of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Joram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, and Ephratite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. You can always tell what brother reading his Bible. When you throw yeah, some Old Testament go ahead, names brother. At them. <laughs> man, I got a brother that said past Sabbath, man. I should have gave him the scriptures before the lesson, man. I set him <laughs> up, y'all. I set him up. Let's skip down. All right. So we got this brother, Elkanah, right? He got two wives. And I'm going to tell y'all this. Every brother that I've ever read in the Bible with more than one wife, it does not fare well. Okay. Come on. And you can pick this story up on your own, but there's some drama. There's some drama with him and his two wives. You can find out why on your own. But skip down to verses 6. We're going to read some of it. Verses 6 and 7. Because one of them is going through something. Come on, brother. And her adversary also provoked her sore. For to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. So you got two wives, one had a baby, one didn't. The one that can have the baby is giving the one that can't some trouble, y'all, or some H-E double hockey sticks, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so this woman is grieved, right? Skip down to verse 10. Give me 10 and 11. Come on. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Mm -hmm. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Not mm -hmm. only do she know who her baby coming from, she requested the gender of her baby, <laughs> didn't she, brother Harold? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because God can do anything, and you gonna understand that if you didn't by the end of this lesson. Skip down to verse fifteen. So she praying hard, y'all. So much so, they thought something was wrong with her. Skip down to verse 15. Come on, brother. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Mm -hmm. that, don't the book say the Lord want a contrite, a broken, a con a broken hearted and contrite spirit? Yes, yes sir. Do. I'm yes, telling you, all better read this sister prayer, and you better read the prayer she made to God after he blessed her and gave her this son. It's powerful. That was verse 15. Give me yes, 19 sir. and 20. Give me 19 and 20. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to the house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Mm -hmm. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. Yes, sir. Mm. And he gave her what she asked for. Ain't that easy? This mm -hmm. is easy. Okay. So now the lesson could be over, but now it's time to scare you. Because if you go along, if you go along with this mess and you don't talk and preach according to what thus says the Lord, God going to get you. Okay. And we're going to read that. That's why we started off with John 6 and 63. You can't just accept the first half of this lesson. You about to accept the second half of this lesson too. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. I told you, you're going to have a decision to make. You go along with this if you want to. Now, I'm not telling you go down and you tear all the posters off the wall at your job and do all that and then call Bowie and say, well, Brother Stevie said on sound <laughs> doctrine. No, I'm not saying do that. That's right, brother. But you know, know what, what to teach. One, ahead, of them one of them posters might be an OSHA poster. I like, know we gotta have that up. <laughs> we gotta add that up. You so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you so funny. But you make sure you teach your children at home. That's mm -hmm. right. First Timothy chapter five, verses 14 and 15. What these women do, what they want these women to do. Now they're telling you how the elder women are supposed to groom and teach the sisters in the class. Look what they tell them to do. Verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Now I keep drilling this, y'all, because you're going to have some men tell you that they're a woman. <laughs> mm. And they got just as much rights as you. Good and complaint. you should be taking that personal because God gave you in this species power to make 
more man, whether it be mm. male or female. That Come womb on, is precious. Come on, brother. That ain't nothing to play with. And remember, God want to bring a godly seed through your womb. Don't let nobody take that away from you. Because verse 15, read verse 15. For some are already turned aside after Satan. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when you go with this father, you know who you didn't turn aside with? Your baby daddy, as my brother <laughs> Julius is saying. <laughs> Psalm 33. Go to Psalm 33. Wow. We ain't got to Google no words in this lesson. You ain't going to have to be in deep thought. I wonder what the brother meant when he read <laughs> This ain't the world history by the prophets. This is going to be real easy. And then you're going to have a decision to make. Straight milk. Yep. And I did it this way. The Lord moved me to do it this way on purpose so you could show it to people. Yes, brother. Psalm 33, verses 11 through 13. I keep telling you about the power of the God of this Bible. Verse 11. Come on, brother. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. <laughs> The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Man, who gonna serve another guy? Who who is making this claim? Right. Mm. Come on, man. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. Blessed, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Yes. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. And that's why you got to be careful at what you're doing because the counsel of the Lord standards forever and he checking you out. Mm -hmm. And you're really going to be scared in the end time prophecy when that heaven, when that heaven scroll roll back like a scroll for five months and you're going to be looking at him and he's going to be looking at you. Mm -hmm. Y'all know that pitch on the wall, no matter where you go, it's looking at you. Mm -hmm. You be trying to dodge it and it's locked in on you. I imagine it's going to be something like that. Wherever you go, that eye going to be on you. You know what I mean? You ever think about that? How does picture keep looking at me? <laughs> Wherever you go, it's looking at you. <laughs> now, I told y'all what we read, Josh been reading all day. The power of God, right? We just read the plan of God stand it, it stand the counsel of the Lord, excuse me. It stands forever, right? Do y'all know your babies who didn't notice your babies can hear you when you're talking to them? Uh-oh. They can hear you. You might want to be reminding your baby now of the gender that they are when you find out you a man, you a man, you a woman, because when they get out in this world, they're going to try to take it from them, y'all. I'm telling you. Come on. Come on bro. Let me show you what I mean. Go to Luke chapter one. I love this story. I just had to throw this in here. Luke 1, 39 through 50. Remind your kid of their gender so they're not confused. <laughs> And the power of a mother, you, you're the first teacher. Your child can hear you. Don't let nobody walk around saying they could be a woman. Everybody can, they can't do that. Luke 1, I'm going to be quiet. Come on, Sister Beasley. It's a precious gift. That's power. See, the, both in the species make up man, male and female. You got to have, that's why he's telling you come together and you be one. Yes. Let nobody come around and tell you no mess like that. Luke 1, 39 through 50. Come on, brother. Check and, Mary, and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zach Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. So the baby was ear hustling on their mama conversation, huh? <laughs> the baby was ear hustling, your baby ear hustling. So when you watching Power, your baby listening if you pregnant. When you're gossiping about Desperate Housewives of Atlanta or <laughs> loving hip hop in Atlanta, come on, listening, they can hear it, right? This woman talking about something righteous. And when he, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with what? The Holy Ghost, 42, come on. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Hmm. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. <laughs> and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. 
I just wanted to read so much of this because it's so good. She got the title of a mother, right? And she's barren. She says, womb. So she about to have a baby in this womb. So let these men tell you that they women because they not, right? What verse is that? You just finished 44? It was the end of 45. That was the end of 45, 46 through 50. Come on, why not? And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Yes. And my spirit hath, hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Because what he do? For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. We just mm -hmm. had to read all that, Brother Harold. Yes. For he that we'll is mighty have done to me great things, and his mercy is unto them that fear him. And I'm going to scare you a little bit before we get out this lesson because you need to be scared. Mm -hmm. So he'll have his mercy on you for going along with this folly if you've been going along with it. All right. Now, I got one more spot for I let my big brother jump in. Go to Romans chapter one. Come on, y'all. They're going to turn your kid into a transformer. You better be reminding your kid of what it is. <laughs> or a gremlin or something. You better be telling them, no, you a man. <laughs> you a girl. Yes. Well, come out. I'm a gremlin. No, you not. You know, brother Stevie, uh, I, I work in IT and we work with software. And I had a um, staff member say, "You know, um, can I tell you something personal?" So, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, you know, the software we have when we click the drop down box, we don't have all these options for the children, but yet the parents are bringing them in, saying, "Call them they," or whatever, with these neutral colors on. And I said, "Ma'am, that lets you know how confusing it is, right?" She, she said, "Yes." So even software is confused by this foolishness, brothers and sisters. Bro, do you know how stressed out you are? So back in the day before this technology, remember we had to bubble in the answers? Remember we had to bubble in the answers with the pencil? Brother Harold, I know you remember that. Oh, the yeah. Bubble in the answers, right? Could you know how stressed out you would be at gender right now before you even took the test? I saw something called a cisgender. I don't even know what that is. I had to ask the HR woman. I'm like, hey, ma'am. What is all of these gender? What what is all of this? It's like seven different things you can click now. Come on, man. But here's why. I watched a documentary called What is a Woman? And I suggest y'all watch it too. Yeah. And you got professors with all these letters behind their name, and they can't answer one simple question. What is a woman? And we didn't read all through the Bible today, all through the Bible, that women have the biological makeup to bring forth life. More like, ain't we read that today? Yes, sir. Right? But here's the problem. When you hear some people, here, here, give me verse 22. Give me, because you can tell who you're dealing with by who they, when they speak. Give me verse 22. Romans 1 and 22. Come on. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Skip down to 24 because it's, it's a doctrine of this, y'all. And it's big money. It's big money getting your kid at this early age to get take all these surges and these pills. It's big money. They start doing it as early as five years old. Okay. Give me verses. Uh, we'll skip down. What verse I say? 24 to 26. Come on. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie yep. and worshiped and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. I can do anything. This I don't care what this man tell you. I can do anything. Everything relies on me. You going to worship this man more than me? Come on, Next bro. verse. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and your natural use is such a blessing mm. to the Come creation on, the creation can't make it without the natural use of what god gave you the species of man that god loves so much would die off without the natural use of how he created your body it is precious next verse 27 and likewise also the men 
leaving the natural use of the woman, mm. burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, mm. and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Come on, mm. big bro. Come on. That, I ain't got to say nothing after man, that. Man, you laid, you laid it down, Brother Stevie, man. <laughs> and that's why the whole world is in trouble because Brother Stevie showed you through the scriptures that how this thing, the Lord set up the order in the beginning. And since this man don't want to obey, and that's when he showed you this Romans 1 because it's written in the law. What did the law say? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18, mm -hmm. and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Then we're going to skip to 22 to get right to the point. Because I want to make sure God said this, Amen. And not Moses. Leviticus 18, we're going to read 1. We're going to skip to 22. Then we're going to move on. Okay, go ahead, Brother Josh. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and the Lord spake on to Moses, saying, mm -hmm. and what did, he, what did he say? Get right down to 22 and read it. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. So that's what the Lord said. You can make, like Brother Stevie pointed out, you can make your own choice. You can live the way you want to live, but you, will you be willing to accept the consequences at the point in time? Because you disobeyed the Lord and, you know, people, oh, well, you, you hurting people and all that. Look, we just here to warn people. You do what you want with this thing mm -hmm. after. But I just delivered myself by warning you that you can't continue this lifestyle and still be a servant in God's favor. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. Just like we can't go around here laying and sleeping around with women. No, nope. yes, so. You, then you can't have a man if you a man or you can a woman you can't have a woman mm -hmm. that's just the way it is proverbs chapter 30 we're gonna pick it up verse 11. proverbs 30 and 11. because it was written here and this this even pointing to the last days proverbs 30 and we're gonna pick it up at verse 11. we're gonna read 11 to 14. Because this is the generation that we are in right now. And it was prophesied way in the old days. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> there is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. Mm -hmm. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. And yep. yet is not washed from their filthiness. Ain't that mm -hmm. something? They pure mm -hmm. in their own eyes. They yeah. use they, oh, I can use all these kind of genders. Oh, I got these uh pronouns and everything, but I'm pure. And mm -hmm. they turn around and say they holy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. There is a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids mm -hmm. are lifted up. Mm-hmm. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives mm -hmm. to, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Now, let's see. Paul going to go in even further into this thing because he's going to expound on this. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1, 1 to 4, because, hey, this thing, we we living in these last days, and this is the generation that Proverbs yeah. was talking about. Teach and we have been closer even now than, man, I tell you, it is, everything is out of order. You know, they people would correct if a politician say something wrong on TV or something. Mm -hmm. They got all these fact checkers, but a mm -hmm. preacher can get behind a pulpit and say anything, and nobody <laughs> checks it. Right. You understand? Don't buy fact check. You can still Google, even if you don't know anything about the Bible, and protect, isolate what that person said and say, is that actually in the Bible? And you can go look at it and see if it's in there. Second Timothy chapter four. We're going to pick it up at verse one. We're going to read one to four. Go ahead and read. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out you of season. You know what? I, I, I said four. I meant three. I'm sorry. 
three. Chapter, Second chapter Timothy three. three, verse one. All right. Still good. Still good that, book, that brother. Was, that was good. Yeah. That was yeah, good. Was. Reading, but we're going to still go. They, they don't endure <laughs> sound doctrine, but we want to go here, though. All right. Go ahead and read. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Uh huh. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh huh. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Wait, proud. Mm -hmm. Don't you got that organization talking about they pride, proud, and all this type of stuff? Mm -hmm. Unthankful, blasphemers, and what? Disobedient to parents, unthankful, what? Unholy. Because we read in Leviticus that you can't be doing this type of stuff and be because the book said it was abomination. Go ahead yeah. and read. Verse 3. Without natural affection, truth breakers, False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Uh huh. They despise because you tend look. You look, brother and sister. You can't live like this type of lifestyle, and they start despising you. Yep. Because you warning somebody because people don't like correction because they're not humble enough to be correct. If I'm a liar and brother Stevie going to book, you ain't supposed to be lying on people and bear false witness then it's up to me to take heed to that continue to read verse four traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasures yep. more than lovers of god wait a minute lovers of what makes me feel good yeah. you know, i feel that you know two men they can be all right together mm -hmm. that's your feeling it said but the book say there's a way that seems right to men but the end there are the ways of death people yes sir you better find out what god won skip down to verse seven and read verse seven ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth ever learning like the brother pointed out they got doctorates behind their names and stuff, and they can't figure these things out. What well, we read is simple stuff in this book today. Right. But the book said, they, they, the book has been blinded for the one that has learned, he can't read it because it's sealed to him. Mm -hmm. Because they ain't trying to obey, so the Lord gonna turn them over to a lie. Skip them down to verse 13. We're gonna read 13 and 17. Then I got one more place. Go ahead and read. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They going to wax well, worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Like the brother Stevie pointed out, look, they got pronouns that you don't even understand. He had to go mm -hmm. ask HR, what is this talking about? <laughs> so and good. the books just said male and female, right? Yeah. That's what the books say. 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You yes. have to stand on the word of God. Don't get caught yes. up in the emotions mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Stand on the word of God. I ain't saying going around hurting nobody or nothing. You just warning people you done did your job. Yeah. It's a, the Lord is the one that's going to be the judge, people. Go ahead and read. 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, brother. I got ahead of myself. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we got 15 to 17. All right. 17. 15, 17. And that for, from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All Scripture yeah. is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. For reproof, reproof, that mm -hmm. one reprove yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Look, you if you live in that type of lifestyle, you have to change. If you're a yep. whoremonger, you got to change. Yeah. Any other thing that offends God, you have to change. That's what the book talk about repentance, people. Teach, brother. Go ahead and read. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. What you want to yes. be righteous? Yes. Now you can brother. live this lifestyle. And use these pronouns all you want in this life, but in the world to come, you're going to pay and you ain't going to be able to pay this price, people. Mm -hmm. That's why we warned you. Go ahead and read. That that the man of God may be perfect, th uh, truly worship, 
excuse me, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto all what good works. And God has established what good works is, which is keeping of his commandments. Yep. That's all that counts. Let's go to First Amen. Corinthians 6. We're going to read 9 through 11. I'm going to turn it back over to the brother because the brother was on fire. <laughs> First he ain't talking to lick of fire. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he full of the fire of the word of God. Amen. So, Praise God. 1 Corinthians 6. We're going to pick it up at verse 9. Because Paul going to say, look, these Corinthians, y'all was all living these lifestyles, but you have changed. Mm -hmm. So you can change from these different things. Don't let nobody tell you you can't change. You can change. To learn to be godly and don't and separate yourself from the world. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Go ahead. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, mm -hmm. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Ain't that something? So we ain't picking on Paul. Ain't picked on no no particular nope. person. He's picking on. He's pointing out all that offend the word of God. You is not gonna make it in the kingdom. That's why you have to change, people. Warning comes before instructions. Hey, you right. Go ahead and read. And such now, this is the key point. This is the last verse, but this is the key point. Verse eleven. Go ahead and read. And such were some of you. Yes. But ye are washed. Amen. But ye, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Ain't that Amen. something? But you Thank washed you by what? The Word of God. So you yes. can change if you want to live in the world to come, yes. people. That's so that's all I got. I'm turning back over to the brother. Amen. Stanley. And that's that John 6 and 63, though, right? The words that I speak, yep. they are spirit. They are light. This word yes. washes and yep. sanctifies you, right? Yes. And then verse 9 said, no effeminate. You can't be dressing up your son like a girl mm -hmm. and putting lipstick and press on nails on him and yep. saying, girl. Yeah. Or he's sitting next to you watching P-Valley and all that other crazy stuff. That's right. No, but because you like that, go to Second Thessalonians chapter two, and Come you on, think bro. it's cute because y'all like it and think it's cute. Go to Second mm. Thessalonians chapter two, and this is what you need to be worried about. Verses eleven and twelve. This is what you need to be worried about, brothers and sisters. Verse eleven. Come on. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh, you better yes. come out of this while the Lord is still giving you a chance That's and let right. this word of God wash and sanctify you like brother just heard in that Corinthians. Because if you don't and you keep playing around with this and I just got to love him, I'm just going to love him how I love him because I'm his mama. Keep, keep that mindset. And you see what we just read, didn't we? Yeah. Excellent. That was Second Thessalonians. Let's go to our next spot. Let's go to Job 42. Because I got to remind you who you're dealing with. I got to remind you. This, this lesson going to scare you. Remind you who you're dealing with. Scare you. Remind you who you're dealing with. Job 42. And I specifically, the Lord moved me to pick these scriptures out. Because no matter who you're talking to, they didn't heard of these books in the Bible before. Everybody didn't heard a job or Job. <laughs> <laughs> Job 42, verses 1 and 2. Now, this is a very powerful book. But the Lord is going to answer uh, Job. And then Job has a response to what God says, right? Look at what Job says to the Lord. Job, Job 42, verses 1 and 2. Go ahead, brother. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Ooh. So when I can do anything, something as small as giving you a baby and telling you the gender of the baby and what pronouns to use is easy. That's light work. That's like shooting a free throw, right? 
That's easy for me because I can do, God can do anything, Come right? On, this is easy. And in your mind, if you still want to play around with this stuff and you still think it's cute, he knows, don't he, Brother Josh? Didn't you just read that? Yeah, I just read it, bro. That's the God we're dealing with because he can do anything. Like, read your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, he's that good, y'all. You know, Isaiah chapter 5. Time to scare you some more. And you better read Isaiah because your God read Isaiah when he came in the flesh. <laughs> so they right. shouldn't have a problem reading this. Yeah, that's right. I'm in school right now and they're trying to take the book of Isaiah from you, saying the <laughs> line that he quoted when he read and he said, this day the scriptures fulfilled. I forget what, what uh, book and verse this is. They're trying to say that verse doesn't exist in Isaiah. Mm, Isaiah 61, my brother. Mm-hmm. But they, they didn't know they were dealing with a priest in this class. So I'm like, well, what about this brother verse he quoted too? <laughs> you wasn't expecting mm -hmm. somebody to come back with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah 5, verses 20 and 23. You better not teach this. You better teach exactly what we read today. And you take the scriptures and you go line upon line, precept upon precept. You don't got to add nothing else to it. Because if you don't and you teaching something different, Isaiah 5, 20 and 23. Come on, brother. Woe unto them that call evil good Ooh. and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitters for sweet and sweet for bitter. Because women have babies, don't they? Mm -hmm. They got a womb, yes. a precious womb. Men marry women, they <laughs> wives, husbands. We did the whole pronoun thing, right? Verse 21. Come on. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward Ooh. and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Because they're going to gang up on you, okay? Man, Brother Stevie, you, this all done for money too, man. It's good. Come bro. on. It's, it's, it's a money trap. Yep. You throw this in with Christmas, Easter, all that, all the money traps. Yep. Right? And they're praying on your kids. Romans 16. Romans 16. You just gently take somebody here a little, there a little. Sit them down and be like, no, baby, you got this wrong. Let me show you. <laughs> These scriptures shouldn't offend you. They should bring comfort to you. Yeah, that's right. And that's how you know what the deal you dealing with the word of God, because the, the Lord ain't a respect of a person. The book fall on who it fall on, y'all. That's right. And you got to deal with it. It okay? fell on me a few times, man. I was it bleeding still all fall. Over Come the place. on, brother Harry. That's right. That's what they don't understand. It's it's when you say you want to start teaching the word of God, you better get ready. You're gonna take a deep look at the man in the mirror. That's right. You better, because he's gonna slice and dice you. <laughs> Romans 6, 17 and 18. You better watch people who act like this. Come on, bro. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division, divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Now I'm not saying you never talk to your kids if they enter this folly, because you got to keep the door open to teach them the word of God. But they should know how you feel about this. They should know how the Lord feels about this. Excuse me. They should know how the Lord feels about this. And that's how I approach this. Look, I'm rolling with God. Let me show you what thus says the Lord. When you ask me, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. What does God think about this? Or what do you think? Well, let me sit down. Next verse. For they that are such serve not our Lord mm. Jesus Christ, Come but on. their own belly. Yes. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Because now you got they got you confused on what gender box to circle. They got you confused on telling your kid, oh, well, I don't want to put he or she on the birth certificate. I want them to be able to choose that on their own. This is easy stuff. Easy. We don't, we don't got to complicate it. OK, now the last verse we're going to go to is to remind you of the power of the God you're dealing with. Don't second guess him. You don't need to. You don't have the authority to second guess him. OK. Go to the book of Revelations. I think it's Revelations 19 and 6. This is a real gentle lesson to sit down with somebody. I'm not telling y'all to teach everybody all 20-some scriptures. Pull a couple scriptures from these. Maybe get three or five of them. And you'll be able to sit somebody down and show them, 
hey, no, this is how this is what God think about this. All right. Revelations 19 and 6. Now, this is end time prophecy here. Your God is coming. Come on, brother. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Mm. Omnipotent means unlimited authority, unlimited power. There's nothing he cannot do. When he returns, you want to be one of the people saying, Alleluia, as your Lord is returning. And the way you do that is to make sure you don't go around with this folly, okay? That was def that was the doctrine of pronouns. We pray and hope somebody was edified from the lesson tonight, all right? I thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, excellent, brother Steve. Excellent. Hey, excellent. excellent reading, brother Josh, man. Yeah, hey. nice job, brother. Man, that's, that, was, that was excellent. This was episode 119, sisters and brothers. Like, share, and post. Give this lesson to a friend so that, yes. hey, so they can don't get caught up in this world because we have to come out of this thing. And hey, you get nothing but uh, great reviews on that. Hey, it was a great lesson, man. Praise, Praise God. Lord. I see you, brother Kevin, Sister Donna holding yeah. it down there as usual. Yeah. Sister Nicole, Nicole. Gabriel, Gabriel, yes. Asadia Israel, Israel. Yes. Real simple. Brother Drake. All right, Drake. All right. Helen Beasley. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mark Brother P. Mark P., I see you. You're my sister yeah. in Dallas. Leonard Washington. Hey. Hey, man. That was straight to the point. Nice and yep. simple. Hey, man, the Lord is, we just thank the Lord that we are out here able to preach the word of God. It's an honor because um, yes, I didn't ever think I would be doing this in, in my on. life. And I'm just glad to be honored with these brothers here on this mm -hmm. set. Hey, Check out all the other Israel of God uh, platforms and like, share, and post them also. Also, make sure you show up in a class if you are yes, able. Yes, brother, if please. You make it, we got all locations all over. Hey, go to the israelofgod.com and find out other locations. You might find a location near you so you can have a holy convocation as the Lord hath commanded. That is a commandment to show up on the Sabbath day because this points to something that's big later on. Yes, and, geez, you, and you can rule with Christ for a thousand years. And that's what we all trying to be in that first resurrection. Yes, bro. Being a saints of God or the honor road of God ruling with Christ sitting on the thrones of David. That's what we are looking for. Because I, yes, I just, yes. hey, I want to be one, like a doorkeeper. I ain't got to have any cities or towns. I'll just be in the right side. As long as I'm <laughs> in the kingdom, I'm good. I'm telling you, brother. Yeah. So next week, we got Brother Josh going to be the teacher next week. Mm -hmm. And the same brothers on the set today. Lord will, we hope to be back next week. And yes. brother said, no questions. There are no more questions. So praise the Lord. We thank y'all for hanging out with us. And we hope... You enjoyed the lesson today. Any other y'all brothers got any last statements y'all want to make before we end this yes, thing? Sir. Great lesson. Not at all, man. man. Great oh, lesson. Enjoyed great. it. It's okay, always brother. a pleasure working in the vineyard with you brothers. And uh, what's up, Sister Tamar? I see you. We miss you dearly out here in New Jersey as well. Praise the Lord. And Brother Josh, you want to hit us with the Lord's Prayer? And we're going to end it tonight. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night, Amen. everybody. Praise the Lord. Good night, brothers and sisters. Peace.
in 